Fudgy Wudgy Fudge Face. I literally do not know where to begin with this movie. It's an experience, and I wouldn't classify it as a good one. Released in 2010, this movie was written and directed by comedian Harland Williams. He also starred in it. I had honestly never heard of this movie until I went on a trip with a few of my friends a couple years ago. In the back of the car that we took, my friend had about 10 copies of this movie, and he wouldn't tell me where he got them from. I still don't know. Eventually, I got around to watching this movie with him, and I really wish we didn't. I, I am a changed man after this movie, and not in a good way. This movie is my sleep paralysis demon. Clearly, this movie is not intended to be taken seriously, and I'm sure it was made on a budget of about $4 and a bag of McDonald's fries, but I hate it so much. I don't know what it is, but this movie is just painful. I get that the entire movie is just a bit, but that's not going to stop me from absolutely tearing into it because this movie is agony. And if I had to suffer watching through this, I'll be damned if I don't make a video about it. So yeah, I'm going to be honest and preemptive warning. This entire video is just going to be me sh being mean to this movie, uh, but I don't care. I'm making it anyways. So before we get started, why don't you leave a like and subscribe to repair my decayed mental state this movie left me with. Also, if you guys are wondering why this movie kind of looks like shit the entire time, it, it just looks like that. It, I, I didn't do anything to drop the quality, it, it just sucks. So without further ado, I present to you, Fudgy Wudgy Fudge Face. God help us all. This movie opens on a spaceship flying towards Earth, and the logo for the supposed production company, Harleywood Studios. Alright, that's kinda cute. The title for the movie shows up, and then we get the opening credits, which are these little dioramas with a horrible song that goes on for over two minutes straight. Chocolatey fudge, 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 fudge. Chewy, chewy fudge. Also, you know a movie's gonna be good when the disc doesn't have a menu, and the movie just starts when you put it in. Wasn't there software for like $2 in like 2002 that could put menus on discs? We then cut to a truck driving through the desert with narration from our main character, Elmore P. Fudge, a humble clog maker. Or, or, or something. And as he's driving, he sees a huge fireball from across the sky, which explodes in the distance. Fudge reasonably decides to just leave, uh, but before he can actually get anywhere, he's stopped by an alien on the road, who just starts dancing for, for way too long. Eventually, the alien comes up to Fudge and touches his face, learning our language like Apocalypse does in that terrible X-Men movie. The alien now knows English, and he talks in a shitty Arnold Schwarzenegger impression which gets really annoying really quickly. Will you be my friend? Yeah. Apparently he's come to Earth to dance and Fudge and the alien decide to become friends and they drive off together to go somewhere. It's not very clear. It's here I'd like to point out something that will be present for the entirety of this movie. Almost every time someone makes a sudden movement, there's a whip crack sound effect like it's an episode of Johnny Test and I hate it so very much. <laughs> Along the way, Fudge suggests that they have a picnic, because he brought along his famous yeah bread, which makes this sound when you squeeze it. Yeah! They then do this for several minutes straight. Eventually they stop and have a picnic, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. But in a thrilling plot twist, the yeah bread has made the alien pregnant, and now Fudge has to help the alien deliver the baby. The alien gives birth, but oh no, the baby isn't moving. So Fudge is instructed to slap the baby to wake it up. This works, resuscitating the baby, and they all drive off together. After some more child abuse, in including placing the baby on the antenna of the truck and it flying off, we cut to the US Air Force, who detected the alien when he arrives. They want to prevent knowledge of aliens breaking out, so they decide to call in Agent 3000 and send a different agent to go in and bribe him. Agent 3000 decides to refer to himself as Stank, and apparently he doesn't do these kinds of jobs anymore, but the Air Force has his lover or whatever, and agrees to free her if Stank goes to kill the alien. We cut back to Fudge and the alien abusing the baby, but oh no, they run out of gas. They decide to hike to the nearest town to look for gas, and to store the baby in the glove box for safekeeping while they're gone. For the record, they forget the baby's here. They, they don't come back for him. Fudge and the alien decide to hike through the desert instead of following the road, and as they get going, they see Mongo Mulo a Hawaiian desert god, and have to do a Mongo chant to appease him and get passage through the desert. <laughs> 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 
They hike for a little while, and Fudge decides to finally ask the alien for his name. And it's incredibly long, so he asks for a nickname, which the alien refuses to accept. The alien asks Fudge what his nickname is, and it turns out that it used to be Fudgy Wudgy Fudge Face. <laughs> He said it! He said it! Fudge and the alien, who Fudge decides to refer to as Little Feller for the rest of the movie, which I will not be doing, continue hiking off, and they pass a gorilla skull in the middle of the American desert. They eventually come to a few whistling donut bushes, which are basically the sirens from Greek mythology, so they look good, but they're poisonous if you eat them. Of course, Fudge and the alien just decide they're built different and eat it anyways giving us our obligatory hallucination scene, because Harland Williams spent four dollars on the editing software and wanted to show it off. This goes on for what seems like an eternity, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. Also, there's this terrifying puppet that gives them waffles or whatever. This thing actually haunts my nightmares, I hate this thing. After an agonizing ten minutes straight, the donuts eventually wear off and Stank catches up with them and attempts to kill them. In order to escape, the alien just teleports them to the nearest town, You'd think he would have done that earlier, or would use that again later in the movie, but but no. Could have saved us the last 15 minutes, but but no. The alien and Fudge go to a little diner and see a shitty Elvis impersonator on stage screaming into a microphone. And I legitimately have no idea what this guy says the entire time he's up on stage. Tiny Earl's Cactus Corner, Motel, Diner, and Gas Station. I know I'm bad at hearing what characters say in movies sometimes, and I make some very dumb mistakes purely to my own idiocy, but I, 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 do, I don't know what he's saying. Fudge eventually goes up on stage and sings and dances, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. Also, he looks directly into the camera, and I, I do not like that. It makes me very uncomfortable. Nighttime eventually comes, and Fudge and the alien spend the night in a motel and the alien explains where he's from and why he's here. Apparently his planet is incredibly controlling and oppressive, and he came to Earth to be an individual. Also, he wants to dance. The next morning, Fudge and the alien get a ride back to Fudge's truck from the singer from the diner, who says his name is Carly Carl, because I can actually understand what he's saying now. The three get along swimmingly, and they all sing together for what they refer to as a power jam, which mainly consists of screaming and wiggling around. Yeah. Also, for some reason, the whip crack sound effect is ten times more prevalent here than it is anywhere else in the movie. <laughs> Eventually, the trio comes to the Valley of the Dolls, which is pretty much what it sounds like, and it is the most terrifying scene that has ever been committed to film. This is genuinely unsettling. I, I, I hate this. Fortunately, Fudge decides to insult them, and then they beat the ever-living shit out of the dolls and escape. After getting away, they can't seem to find Fudge's truck, so Carl just gives up and gives Fudge his truck, deciding that he'd rather wander endlessly into the desert than stay in the movie. And just like that, he's gone. He doesn't come back. Fudge and the alien then decide to have a philosophical discussion about what it means to feel pain, and Fudge decides to break all of his fingers to demonstrate a point. Also, he slams the alien's head in the car door like he's the kingpin from Daredevil. You embarrassed me. Embarrassed me in front of her. The conversation eventually moves towards emotional pain, which this movie is giving me a lot of. Fudge tells the alien that he used to love a girl, and she died in a car accident many years ago. Also, they teleported to a cornfield for some reason. The alien decides to give Fudge a vision of his girl, so we can finally make his peace, which goes on for so long. While in the dreamscape, Fudge and the girl dance and run around for what feels like an eternity, and eventually, Fudge goes to kiss her, and it turns out that he's actually kissing the alien. This leads into a 20 minute long sex scene that I cannot show here, but it eventually culminates in Fudge and the alien going to France and hooking up with femboys. Obviously that part doesn't happen, uh, but Stank does shoot the alien. Fudge and the alien try to escape Stank, but the alien is grievously wounded and is bleeding out bubbles. So Fudge decides to break out an ability he has had the entire time and will never use again the ability to tunnel with his teeth like the dwarves from Art of His Fowl, a book series that they never made a movie out of. The movie decides not to show us the tunneling, so we just cut to the two of them wandering around an underground tunnel, where the camera really just doesn't want to focus. Also, there's two, these two archaeologists, for some reason, who find an inscription on the wall for a recipe for KFC. I, I don't know why this is in the movie. Eventually, they leave the cave and are magically back in the truck they abandoned, 
and decide to order an Arby sandwich, which will apparently heal the alien. Also, they get 22 turnovers, which will come in later. Out of every fast food restaurant, they chose fucking Arby's. The restaurant I eat at every two years just to remind myself that it sucks. I don't know why, but this makes me hate the movie more than I already did. In order to use the sandwich to heal the alien, they somehow teleport to California to a pool party with a bunch of women and a guy who really, really creeps me out. Party. Party. They heal the alien by just taping the Arby sandwich to him, and then they have a party. And it's so long. And I hate it. And it creeps me out. Party! <laughs> Operator! Could you please connect me to a certain <laughs> Mr. Party! I hate this fucking movie, man. The party goes on for like 10 minutes and includes the alien pissing on everyone, and they play party games, one of which involves dumping onion buns into the pool and then getting disintegrated. <gasps> Meanwhile, Stan gets called by the feds, and they threaten to kill his girlfriend or whatever if he doesn't hurry up. Also, the girl is an alien. That, that doesn't really become plot relevant. Also, they forgot to give anybody microphones. Sweetheart. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they forgot. Stank's determination is renewed, and he does this. I just think that's funny. Fudge and the alien eventually leave the party and decide to go to a club and Fudge explains racism along the way. That's not a joke. At the club, they meet this random lady who has an appropriate reaction to seeing Fudge. And I come to further drink. Me too, girl. They just kind of sit around contorting their faces for a while until the alien gets up and dances for an agonizing three minutes, which makes the lady really horny. Me too, girl. Eventually, they decide to leave the bar and Stank catches up with them, shooting out their tires or whatever. Fudge decides to break out something he has apparently always kept in the back of his truck in case of emergencies, forgetting that this is in fact not his truck, it's Carly Carl's. Of course, the thing is something you keep in the back of your truck too, uh, a Chinese man named Kangaroo Hands O'Reilly, who bestows wisdom upon anyone who asks him. I... I got nothing, man. Kangaroo Hands tells Fudge to go out and face Stank, and to do everything he can to protect his friend. That's literally the only thing he does. I don't know why he's in this movie. Fudge goes out to confront Stank. Also, the alien finds a bunch of satellite dishes in the back of the truck and starts dicking around with them. After Stank threatens to kill Fudge, the alien comes out to stop him, giving a speech about friendship and freedom and the American way. I came to this planet to be free. If I must fight for that freedom, I shall. If I must die for that freedom, I shall. Stank throws the alien a gun and a little hat, and they have a little shootout, which results in the alien being shot. Fudge comforts the alien as he dies, and the alien gives a flashback of all the memories they made along the way, which lasts for five minutes straight, and then he passes away. Stank leaves, and Fudge buries the alien, giving a speech and driving off, in what is truly one of the most emotional death scenes in cinema history. Fudge drives away from the alien's grave, but before he gets too far, he is interrupted by a figure standing in the middle of the street. It turns out that the alien is still alive, and he's Mexican for some reason. The alien explains that he created a hologram using the satellite dishes to trick Stank into thinking he's dead. Also, all the Mexican stuff disappears in between takes. I guess he just really wanted to watch Fudge bury him and give a speech. The alien finally decides to reveal what the 22 Arby's turnovers they bought are for by throwing them into the air and letting them guide the way for where they're going to go next. And so, the two drive off together, and mercifully, the movie ends. The credits are a collection of the behind-the-scenes footages of them filming, uh, and then someone just mumbles a song in the background. Maple, 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 fudge. Honestly, I think a movie about them making this movie would be more interesting because apparently it took five years to film this movie. And of course, there's a fucking post credit scene where the baby that they just abandoned in the middle of the road in a truck that's out of gas has grown up and somehow refueled the truck. And he just drives off. I really, really don't want a fudgy-wudgy-fudge-face cinematic universe. Please spare me from this. 
But that pretty much brings us to the end. I think my brain has actually atrophied from watching this movie. I'm not even kidding. But thankfully, I never have to watch this movie again, and neither does anyone else. I can finally get rid of it, saving humanity forever. So yeah, I hate this movie. But let's be honest, this was never supposed to be good. And as much as I don't like this movie, this isn't one of my least favorite movies. There's movies I hate much, much more than this. This is just the worst movie I've ever seen, not my least favorite. This was always designed to be a bad movie, and it succeeds at that. This was clearly just Harlan Williams and a few of his buddies dicking around in the desert. So I do feel a little bad for just shitting on this movie, but also, I had to sit through it, and if you had to sit through it, you would agree with me. Alright, so I'm gonna go hunt down all the copies of this movie so no one else has to watch it. Sorry this video took so long. I got busy with school and wound up redoing parts of this video midway through editing. This was supposed to come out like a week and a half ago, but it just, it just didn't happen. So I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye, like and subscribe. What are you doing? That was on camera. Okay. <laughs> Stop running around! <laughs> he just hit the brakes.